In today's world where we have motherboards that already have passive heat sinks and since we're going towards motherboards that are actually starting to cost quite a lot, we have also those boards that either don't have a passive heat sink on the M.2 slots or you already pre-occupied every single slot, but you do have PCI Express slots empty because the graphic card is on the first slot. So today we're going to talk about Grau Gear M.2 NVMe PCI 4.0 card with a huge passive heat sink that basically goes on the M.2 slot. But before we start in go into any of the details, so Grau Gear is a known company from Chab GmbH and uh, it's a young startup company which does this uh, kind of, I wouldn't call them gadgets, but a cool products that will make your SSDs cooler. Well, not only SSDs, but we'll get to that part later on. So you can check out all the details on their social media. So they're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Amazon. You can check them anywhere. And of course, links are in the description as well. So let's check out the main thing right here. And this is quite cool in terms of, as I already stated, you already have all your M.2 preoccupied, you want to cool down, or maybe the motherboard doesn't have a passive heatsink, you want to cool it down with constant uh, efficiency with cooling, no thermal throttling and stuff like that. This is the way to go. This is a really cool thing to have and uh, it can cool down your M.2. Keep it stable, I would say. Keeping it stable on certain temperatures, while preventing it from thermal throttling. Now also, as you can see, you can place it in a standard case with standard PCI Express slots, or you can go with a low profile one and place it in a much, much smaller case. Now today we're going to use the Alexars NM800 Pro SSD, which is Gen 4x4. And of course, we're going to test it out to see how it will perform. Going to check out the thermals before that. And then we're going to place it in this Grau Gear M.2 PCI Express uh, card with passive heatsink. Now, I have loads of stuff right here on the table and I'm going to explain every single detail that we have. So you get a small screwdriver for detaching the, the PCI slot to detach uh, the passive heatsink. Uh, to attach the actual M.2, you have four thermal pads, you get additional screws and a standoff, which is basically designed for different types of M.2. So, it supports uh, M.2 NVMe SSDs of 2280, 2260, 2242 and 2230 in M key. Converts one M.2 SSD to one PCI 4.0 times 4 interface. Data transfer rates goes up to 64 gigabits per second. Uh, the top housing, so th this is important, the material of the passive heatsink uh, is aluminium and uh, the thermal pads actually, well, you know already what they do. Also, it is downwards compatible to PCIe 3.0 and 2.0. You get four thermal pads, as already stated. You get one 0.5 millimeters. You get two of those in one millimeter of thickness and one with 1.5 millimeter. The dimensions are 128 times 18 and a half times 120 and the weight is basically unnoticeable 115 grams. So let's check it out. At the back we have four screws that need to be removed completely. So the attaching the four screws quite easily. You use the screwdriver that you get or you could use your screwdriver, it doesn't really matter. And when you take a look at the passive heatsink, you can see that it has some fins which are designed in terms of uh, airflow going through them and cooling it down. At the bottom we have four standoffs which are designed to be placed on the PCB board right here which uh, you use to uh, tighten the passive heatsink to your PCB board and to your M.2 SSD. At the bottom you can see clearly that you have to use the standoff for attaching the SSD because apparently and this is quite alright. I mean if you have some different uh, M.2 SSDs in terms of sizes, uh, they didn't pre-apply anything. So basically this, what gives you an option is what kind of SSD you have. That's how you're going to attach the standoff. 
Now placing the M.2 is uh, not a bit tricky, but what you have to do is first align the M.2 SSD, then place the standoff on the M.2 SSD where you're basically usually going to use uh, uh, screws to attach it. Place it back at the bottom of the part where you're going to screw it in from the other side. And that's basically it. This is how it's designed to keep the M.2 fixed to the position. So it, it looks a bit uh, difficult, but it really isn't because the standoff has a certain thread that you place the part where you usually uh, attach the screw to hold the M.2. You place it on the M.2 and after that you tighten it up from the back side. One thing I noticed right now by checking the, this PCI card is that the finish on this slot right here is matte black. Which in most scenarios, since most of us are running uh, in black cases, right? This will actually be quite cool in terms of uh, blending in with the entire case and it won't be noticeable i mean check this out so you place uh, the passive heatsink and it's barely seen of course i placed it on the wrong side but nevertheless and it's barely seen the whole uh, dimensions are quite uh, short and small uh, it uses up one slot so that's that now what i wanted to say also is uh, with my m.2 ssd which is single sided I'm going to use one millimeter of thermal pad to place it on the M.2, which will nicely cover the whole M.2 SSD, yet won't raise the passive heatsink too much from the M.2 SSD. So that's quite important. So you don't flex the PCB board, you don't flex the M.2, and uh, it continues to work normally. So let's check out the results. First of all, we have to test out the M.2 SSD without the Grau Gear passive heatsink and the PCI card, of course. And uh, I did uh, three consecutive tests in Autodesk Benchmark just to see what temperature could I accumulate on the SSD. So it went up to 65 degrees Celsius, which is, I would say, not quite normal. I would say, yeah, quite normal. But it uh, could be lower, of course, and at 65 it doesn't thermal throttle, but here's the catch. So, placing the Graugear M.2 NVMe PCI 4.0 card, really long name, but nevertheless, uh, on the M.2, so first you do have to remove the passive heatsink, then you have to place your M.2, place the standoff the precise way so the bottom part needs to be longer of the standoff and the top side is the smaller part you tighten it up from the back you place the passive heatsink with four screws attach it i did use 0 0.5 millimeter uh, thermal pad i could have gone with one millimeter but check this out 0.5 millimeter thermal pad on the Grau Gear PCI Express uh, with a passive heatsink card that uh, cooled it down. It really did cool it down. So in idle, the temperature was 25. So imagine this at full load 65 with this one on idle 25. In full load, so after three consecutive tests in Autodisk Benchmark, the temperature on this M.2 SSD with the Grau Gear passive heatsink went down to 45 degrees Celsius. That's 20 Celsius degrees lower than without it. And this definitely proves the thing that I was talking about constantly, that if, for instance, for some strange reason, the M.2 heats up, if it's either a bad M.2 or bad controller or bad chips or something happens, but still, you know, you bought it, you can't uh, return it for warranty or anything similar to that. It doesn't matter. That point, that fact is totally relevant to this situation, but it heats up. The SSD heats up. Grab this one. It lowers down the temperature for 20 Celsius degrees, which is incredible. And uh, I was actually surprised. I was tempted to go with the fourth run, but it didn't go. So the first run goes up to 42 degrees Celsius. And the second one goes 43, 44, and the third one touches 45. So that's it. 
20 degrees Celsius with Grau Gear PC and PCI NVMe uh, 4.0 card with passive heat sink. It looks cool. It has a Grau Gear logo here on the passive uh, part, which is basically sticking out. You can actually see the Grau Gear. And you have a blue LED that lights up when it's properly connected. So if you connect it properly, it gets um, the transfer data, it gets all the power and stuff like that. The blue LED lights up. So that's really cool. Something that gives you an indication that you did everything properly. So if you're worried about the thermals on your M.2, it, tro it thermal throttles and similar stuff like that, you want to cool it down, you have a constant usage on your SSD that needs to be cooled down. This is basically the way to go. I mean, if your motherboard doesn't have a passive heat sink and you're still worried, this is it. So I'll place the links below for the Grau Gear. I'm going to repeat that name one more time. PCI Express NVMe 4.0 card with a passive heat sink in the description below. So you can check out the prices. And the cool thing, it's not even that expensive in terms of when you take a look that you basically lower down the temperatures for 20 degrees and you still get uh, a nice uh, design, I would say, nice stealth design, which basically in your PC, it's not that even noticeable. People will think it's just a small card, like an audio card or whatever, but actually it's something really cool that cools down the M.2. That's it. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future reviews because we have more parts coming in from Grau Gear as well with external M.2 uh, housing, which is actually quite cool and you'll see it quite soon. So don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I will see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.